indeed. Christmas Deadless goes hard. This is awesome. All right, today I'm gonna to be making a, a cheap bolt slinger archer build for all of you people who do not have money. There's two different versions this time around. We're gonna be using Fog of the Creation as the weapon, and it's gonna be a nice little rainbow bolt slinger archer build. We're gonna start with Fog of the Creation first. Fog of Creation. These bows go for pretty cheap, but hopefully there is the cheap bows while you're still looking for them. Obviously, they do ramp up fast and there's not that many of them for some reason. Kind of annoying, but that's whatever. We can still find one. The main stat you're looking for is health regen and spell damage. Spell damage is probably the most important. Um, Let's see. This one looks good. I'm going to take this one. 13 EB. Start it off. Looking good. We got our weapon now. Fog of Creation. For this one, we're going to use Cumulon Imbus. We're going to search for a cheap one. These should be below one LE. You should really get a good one for below LE. Like, dude, look at that. I'm going to take this one. This one's really nice. 43 EB. Nice. We got our helmet. The next piece is C Gazer. This one's a relatively cheap rainbow piece that people don't use for some reason, but it's pretty nice. You can get some good mana regen out of it, and we might be able to get lucky here because they're pretty cheap. Let's see. 43. Oh, we got a 15 mana. I feel like the mana regen here is probably the most important thing, but there's also a 13 over here that has bad water. We're, go, we're trying, to, trying to go for a little bit higher on the water damage, but if you can't, it's okay. We're going to be boosting it anyway. Here we go. Look at this. 63% overall. 45 EB. We'll take it. That's the chest plate. Next piece. This is one for both of them. Equalizer. Unfortunately, this one will probably be pretty expensive. Uh, it's gonna be one LE cheapest. So this is this is one of the expensive pieces. It's this one and a ring that are gonna be expensive. But most it's the reason is most of the stats on here are actually pretty important. This is probably gonna be the best one we'll find. Yeah, the rest are. This one's pretty good overall, but it's also nearly two LE. This is the best one. High spell damage. You're going for high spell damage and high mana regen and high mana steal. That's pretty important. Health regen is nice. Life steal is nice, but we're looking for sustain here and damage. So one LE for an equalizer. That's our pants. And then the pair of boots is a Capricorn. Yet again, <laughs> maybe if you uh, were using that fallen build, you could just use the Capricorn from over there for this one as well. So 24 EB, this one's already looking pretty good. We'll try and go for some nice mana steal this time as well. Let's see, we're going up 42. Let's see. Oh shoot, my bad. This one's pretty good overall, almost. And another one LE. Let's just go for this one. This one's pretty nice. 24 EB, bet. We have all of our armor now. Time for accessories. The first ring you're going to be using is Moon Pool Circlet again from Water Hive. Um, if you can't get that because you haven't done Hive yet, there is Photon, which also requires a quest to be done. But you'll be able to get a ring for free. Right now they're super expensive, so you don't want to buy it. But if you do the quest, you'll be able to get the ring. It's uh, it's just Realm of Light. One and two. You have, to, you have to do the second one. The second one is named Tap Root. Once you do that, he'll give you a photon and you can ID it. You could probably re-roll it to three. And it'll still be less expensive than buying it from the trade market. The next ring would be... Joy Fair for the minus Aerostorm cost. This one's also going to be pretty expensive on the trade market. But it is a quest item. You don't have to buy it. All you have to do is there is a quest 
level 60 quest called the order of the grook and there will be if you if you look up on the wiki there will be a specific option for you to choose if you want the drive fair you're going to choose one of the two of the ones and now get you a draft fair as one of the reward. That's the easiest way for you to get it, other than buying it. It costs you three LE, a little bit, but any draft fair should be nice. All we're looking for is just more Aerostorm cost reduction, because we're gonna be using Aerostorm a lot with this build. And that's it. Um, next piece is Misalignment. It's a common bracelet, which should be pretty cheap but there's not that many people who take them, so you're gonna have to get lucky. Here we go, five mana regen. Oh, this one's looking good. Oh, never mind, it's five LE. Yeah, okay. So here we go, 36 EB, we'll take it. That's a max mana regen bracelet, and we got it. All right, so there you go. I started off with nine. That cost me about four LE, almost, actually just three and a half, but it would cost me more. If I didn't, if, if I had to buy a draw fair or a photon. Um, lastly, I forgot to mention, Durham's Serenity is just a necklace that I'm going to use in replace of Contrast in case you haven't done the Master Hive. If you haven't been able to beat Kira yet, if you have, you just use Contrast. Contrast is a better overall necklace but Durham Serenity is good for the SP that we need and that's pretty much the only reason why we're using it. It's 12 SP. That's really nice. It's super easy to get. You just gotta do like a super low level boss altar on Durham Idol. Now the alternative build instead of Cumulonimbus and Seagazer you would use a Morph Stardust which is a pretty cheap helmet. Like, this is super cheap. You can probably get a good one for not that much. Look at this. 2EB. It just has bad mana regen, so that's okay. But this is, like, near max health regen. Good spell damage. Like, come on. You could, you could definitely get picky with this one. Like, you can, go for, you can go for a good one. You just have to really look th through the uh, options. And then for the chest plate, you would take Libra. Which is pretty expensive. This is probably the... This this would be the most expensive piece, but this is for a build that has more EHP. Otherwise, with both of the builds, if you want more health, you can use Valward. And this will be pretty good. Get you a whole lot more SP, gives you a whole lot more room. Relatively cheap. You go for spell damage here. That's pretty much the only point ID. You just go for as uh, the highest spell damage that you can get. So I'll probably take this one. But yeah. The build is still below 10 LE, and you can probably choose some of the pricier ones. Let's see the tree, the ability tree. We're just gonna go down it real quick. Arrow bomb, go down, grab cheaper arrow bomb. We're gonna be using arrow bomb a bit. Double shots. We're going to the left side of the tree because we're doing bolt slinger. We're gonna go down thunder mastery. We're gonna grab air mastery, water mastery, nimble strings, frenzy. We're gonna ignore arrow rain. We don't really care about that. Garden angels. Stormy Feet, we like being helpful to our teammates. We're going to keep going down. You need Fierce Stomp. Arrow Hurricane, don't care about those. We do care about this. Take down. Elusive. If you do not get hit for four seconds, become immune to self damage and Arrow Storm loses its recoil. This is really nice. Snowstorm and All Seeing Panoptis. This is a Guardian Angel buff. Pretty nice. Guardian Angels is a. Nice thing to have. Um, and then we have a few more that you can put into other things. We're going to go for Firefight Roots. And we have one more now. Cheaper Aerostorm. And that's the tree. We now have Speed 2. Cast Guardian Angels once. It lasts for a little bit. Every time it goes down, you just recast it. I'll show you some gameplay. And I'll show you what this build can do. I'm going to use the one that does more damage, but it has less health. It's more so because I believe that I'm not going to die, so it should be fine. Archer is real. Archer has no real reason to get hit unless it's like a forced interaction, then it's like risky. But you have plenty of options to run away. And 
outspace your enemies. There we go. I have I have extra SP because I have tomes, but it's you don't need tomes to wear this build. I'm gonna put the rest of my SP or the rest of my skill points into strength and dexterity. And one into defense for good luck. <laughs> I'll show you what this build can do in a second, alright? But yeah, that's the build section. Fog of Creation is pretty nice. There's some alternative bows like Torrential Tide that you can make a build for that I'm going to list in the description as well, but I will not be showing in this video. Torrential Tide is pretty nice, not that expensive either, and you can get some pretty good ones for cheap. Like this is 36 EB. That's nice. Uh, there's also Gale's Force, which will have more walk speed. It's an agility bow. This one's also pretty cheap, and you can make builds off of this as well. But since we're going to be using Fog of Creation for this video, because I like Rainbow Archer. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, let's show some gameplay. got me shaking holy crap well look at that um yeah i had i was forced to solo tna <laughs> for the last four million hp um this build is definitely usable it's archer archer's broken even a crappy build like this can definitely hold up against a boss like greg as long as you know what you're doing obviously i was kiting against the walls so that whenever he jumped it didn't create void holes, and it just let me continue cycling around. Uh, I would make sure my guardian angels were up so that I would get frenzy for my walk speed. I would listen to the sounds to make sure I could hear whenever he was doing a special uh, skill. I almost died at the very end because of uh, those skulls, so I, gotta, I had to be more aware of those. But otherwise, yeah, that's the build. Thanks for watching, and... Have a great day. Builds are in the description always.